The Queensland Mines Rescue Service has been established to provide an emergency response within the mining industry. Our vision is to be a world leader in emergency management, and our GAG units position us on the world stage when it comes to emergency response. The dangers in an underground coal mine emergency come from explosion or explosive gases and fire. GAG units use jet engine technology to replace the potentially explosive atmosphere with an inert gas, controlling and limiting oxygen to outbreaks of fires. This presentation is an overview of the GAG units and basic requirements for setup at a site in an emergency. The Queensland Government purchased a GAG unit in 1999 from the Polish Mines Rescue Service. This followed recommendations from an inquiry into the 1994 Mara No. 2 mine disaster. The aim was to have a high-volume, low-pressure mine inertization unit. The unit was tested in Collinsville and the Queensland Government then gave the unit to Queensland Mines Rescue Service to maintain, to train personnel and to have ready for emergencies in Queensland. The operating parameters of the GAG have been fine-tuned over time with assistance of CSIRO and SIMTARS to produce the quality of GAG product needed to manage an underground mine atmosphere. Queensland Mines Rescue Service now has two fully functional GAG units. One is trailer mounted for immediate deployment to any mine in Queensland. The other is in component form for rapid transport to any part of the world. Individual mines are responsible for development and maintenance of the infrastructure required to support a GAG deployment, as well as the training of personnel. These requirements are outlined in various acts and regulations. A GAG docking station standard and a GAG operating guideline enable QMRS to safely manage a mine emergency. These documents can be obtained by contacting QMRS. Site compliance is subject to annual audit by QMRS. The GAG unit consists of a jet engine fitted with an afterburner. Coupled to a set of afterburner cooling tubes, a diffusive cooler where water is ejected, a means of connecting it to the mine, and auxiliary equipment to operate the unit, including water pumps, fuel pumps and supply, fully fitted out control room and gas monitoring mechanisms. Air enters the jet engine through the inlet filter to the compressor assembly at the forward part of the engine. The compressor forces the air into the engine combustion chamber. Some air that enters the combustion chamber is used to cool the engine body. Fuel enters the combustion chamber via a ring injector system. The fuel is ignited and mixed with the compressed airflow. This produces a high pressure, high temperature combustion exhaust gas flow. The hot pressurized gases from the combustion chamber are directed to the gas turbine via steering vanes. This is when the kinetic energy of the combustion gases is converted to mechanical energy to power the compressor and auxiliary equipment. Exhaust gases leaving the turbine pass into the afterburner combustion chamber. In the afterburner, Fuel is injected and hot gases from the turbine engine are ignited to produce a high temperature gas product with low oxygen content. Exhaust gas from the engine and afterburner travel through the afterburner cooling tubes at around 700 degrees Celsius. Heat created by the afterburner consumes leftover oxygen from the engine. By the time the exhaust gas reaches the diffusive cooler, most if not all oxygen is consumed. Water added at the diffuser cools exhaust gases, producing large volumes of steam, approximately 25 cubic meters per second. Noise levels 50 meters away can reach 100 decibels when the gag unit is running, so appropriate hearing protection must be worn in the area. The combustion process of the fuel creates the carbon dioxide levels, which can be fine-tuned by adjusting afterburner fuel pressure and engine RPM. As afterburner fuel pressure increases, oxygen levels decrease and temperature increases. 
As engine RPM increases, oxygen levels increase and temperature will decrease. The flow of water in the internal cooling ducting keeps the afterburner cooling tubes cool. This cooling water is recycled, dumped into the tank and recirculated, then injected into the diffusive cooler for further cooling of the exhaust gas. So in summary, exhaust gas starts out at 700 degrees. Heat burns off the oxygen. The diffusive cooler cools exhaust gases to an acceptable level to go underground and creates water vapour in the form of steam. The gag product, now at about 90 degrees, is pushed into the mine via a docking station. When gag product exits the diffusive cooler, it enters a T-piece. At this T-piece, we have the ability to put the product into the atmosphere until desired gas levels are reached. We can then switch so the product is directed underground. The gag unit is connected to the mine via a flexible ducting. This is a fusible link designed to blow off should an overpressure event occur underground or burn out should water pressure to the diffuser cooler be lost, so preventing 700 degree exhaust gases entering the mine. The gas product replaces an explosive or potentially explosive mine atmosphere with an inert gas product. The gas is low oxygen, high water vapour that puts out any fire that might be burning underground by cooling it and starving it of oxygen. The inert gas also replaces volatile gas to prevent further explosions. Gas composition from the gag unit is 0 to 5% oxygen, 10% CO2 by volume, and the remainder primarily nitrogen. The gas has a high water content in the form of steam which is put into the mine at 85 to 90 degrees Celsius. The gag produces 25 cubic meters per second of low oxygen, high water vapor gas. When it cools and the water vapor drops out, this equates to about seven cubic meters a second of dry, inert gas. This is the figure to be used when calculating the mine atmosphere to be replaced. The gag runs at a pressure of 2 kPa to push the unwanted atmosphere out of the mine. The mine ventilation system can assist movement of gag product underground and the removal of unwanted gases and needs to be ramped down to 7 to match the input from the gag. An auxiliary fan might be used to assist if ramping down a mine's ventilation fan is not possible or feasible. If mine ventilation fans have been destroyed, the gag unit has the ability to move gases throughout the mine at a pressure of 2 kPa and a flow rate of 7 cubic meters a second. The gag's maximum sustainable pressure is 2 kPa. The gag consumes about 1800 litres of jet A1 kerosene per hour when running with the afterburner on. It consumes 40,000 litres of water per hour and it's important this water is as clean as possible. The gag product gas composition is monitored at 15 minute intervals to ensure required product is going underground. The mine site monitors the atmosphere underground to track movement of gag product and determines when the required level of oxygen is reached. The mine's sealing infrastructure is then used to seal the mine. This prevents re-entry of oxygen and maintains the mine atmosphere in a stable condition. It's critical the mine emergency sealing facilities are high standard to prevent entry of oxygen into the mine. They should also be able to be operated from a safe location. Without pre-planning and proper emergency sealing in place, it's difficult to seal the mine and prevent re-entry of oxygen. The Queensland Mines Rescue Service provides emergency response to the mining industry. In aiming to be a world leader in emergency management, we continually revise our procedures and ensure our people are trained. Our gag units, although just one of the response services we provide, are helping to position us on the world stage. <laughs>